Okay, next we have uh, standard costing. Once you have studied variances, standard costing and budgets become very easy. So that is the reason I teach variances before standard costing. So I will not explain standards. I've already made a video about it. I will uh, put the link to that video in the description. So let's look at questions on variances. So once you have done uh, uh, variances, you already know uh, how to work on standards. Okay, we have a big question here. And then we have some quick questions that we will work on. So with this video, before you look at this video, uh, look at the video uh, in the link. Okay, um, using above information, drop standard cost card for the Joe. So standard cost card uh, is where we put details uh, of standard costs of a product or a job or whatever that is. Blogs makes one product the Joe. Two types of labor, labor are involved in preparation of Joe. Skilled and semi-skilled. Skilled labor is paid 10 per hour and semi-skilled is uh, 5 per hour. Twice as many skilled labor hours as semi-skilled labor hours are needed for uh, to produce a Joe. Four semi-skilled labor hours uh, being needed. A Joe is made up of three different direct materials, seven kilograms of direct material A, four liters of direct material B, and three meters of direct material C are needed. Direct material A cost one dollar per kilogram, direct material B two per liter, and direct material C three per meter. Variable production or has are incurred a block score at the rate of 2.5 per direct labor skilled. A system of absorption costing is in operation at block so the basis of absorption is direct labor skill hour for forthcoming accounting period budgeted fixed production has are to 50,000 and budgeted production of Joe is 5,000 units. Administrative administration uh, selling and distribution hour has are added to the product at the rate of 10 per unit and a markup of 5% is made on Joe. Okay. Uh, let's look at first thing first, which is um, uh, labor. We have two types of labor. Skill, which is paid 10 per hour, and semi-skill, which is paid 5 per hour. Twice as many skill labor hours as semi-skill labor hours are needed. So we need two times as many as semi-skilled. Four semi-skilled labor hours are needed. So multiply by four and twice would be eight here. So total cost of semi-skilled, sorry, skilled is 10. Semi-skilled is five. We have 20 and 80. So twice as many skill hours as semi skill. Okay, so collectively we have 100 for labor, standard cost of labor. See, when once you do variances, standard becomes very easy. A joy is made of three materials, seven kilograms of A, four liters of B, three meters of C. A cost one dollar, B cost two dollar, C cost three dollar. So multiplying becomes seven, eight, and nine, which becomes about twenty nine. Let's calculate it. Seven plus eight plus nine. Twenty-four, sorry. So we have twenty-four. And then overheads. Variable overheads are incurred at blocks go at 2.5 per direct labor hour skill. Skill hours are 10. Multiply by 2.5, we have 25.
A system of absorption costing is an operation of blocks so the basis of absorption is direct labor skill. For the forthcoming accounting period, budgeted fixed production or his are to 50,000 and budgeted production of joy is 5,000 uh, units. So that will give us 250,000 divided by 5,000. Five per unit. Okay, the basis of absorption is direct labor hours for forthcoming period budgeted. Okay, so we need to find hours because we are adding it per hour basis. We have uh, 250,000 divided by 5,000 hours, which is 5,000 multiplied by hours, which hours skilled becomes 50,000. So 250,000, did I do it correct? 5,000 units multiply by 10, yeah. 250,000 divided by uh, 50,000 becomes 50 per, un uh, per hour. So I don't know why I've divided by 10,000. The basis of absorption is direct labor skill for forthcoming period. And we have four semi skill needed. So we multiply by uh, eight, not 10. So we have 40,000 hours. which is 62.5, okay. We are dividing it on skill hours and we need twice as many skill labor hours as semi-skill. Semi-skill are four, so skill are eight. Okay, we have 62.5 per hour. Administration and selling uh, and distribution are added to a product at the rate of 10 per unit. A markup of 25% is made up on just. So let me double check. I want to know why I've previously written dividing by 10,000 just to confirm that. For semi skill are needed twice as many skill as semi skill. That gives us eight. 5,000 units multiplied by eight becomes 40,000, so we have 62.5. Yeah, this seems right. And to 50,000 divided by 5,000 becomes 50 per unit. It doesn't seem right, yeah? Okay, I've added extra zero. Six point twenty-five. Okay, so We have actually four hours and eight hours. Five and ten is the rate, uh, the cost. Five and ten. I've multiplied here by eight, uh, ten. It is actually eight. We have twenty here. So fix our heads is eight. Multiply by six point twenty-five, which becomes fifty. And then admin sales and distribution which is added at 10 per unit. And then we add 25% markup on the job. But let's look at the total cost. We have 100 plus 24 plus 20 plus 50 plus 10 becomes 204. 204 is the full cost, adding a markup, which is 25%. Remember, markup is profit as a percentage of cost, so you can directly multiply. If it was margin, you would not be able to do this. So we have 51, and adding it together, we have 255, the selling price. Let's look at kit questions. 
what is the standard prime cost for one unit of G? Remember, prime cost is the total direct cost. A company is in the process of setting standard unit cost for next period. Project J uses two types of material, P and S. Uh, 7 kgs of P, 3 kgs of S are needed at a standard price of 4 per kg and 9 per kg respectively. Direct labor will cost 7 per hour uh, and each unit of J requires 5 hours of labor. Production overheads are recovered at the rate of 6. So when they say prime cost, we don't need overheads. So we have 7 kg at the rate of 4. We have 3 kgs at the rate of 9. And then we have direct labor 5 hours at the rate of 7. Adding all of them together, we have prime cost. What is a tenable standard? If you have watched the video on standards, you will understand this. A standard which is which includes no allowance for losses, waste, and inefficiency. It represents level of performance which is attainable under perfect condition, which is ideal standard. A standard which includes some allowances for losses, waste, and efficiency. It represents level of performance which is attainable under uh, efficient operating conditions. Maybe a standard which is based on currently att uh, attainable operation con conditions that becomes current standard. A standard which is kept unchanged to show trend in cost. This would be basic standard. So the answer is this one. It it is it can be achieved if we work a little bit harder. Which of the following is correct? The operating standard set for production should be most ideal. Uh, the operating standard should be minimal, should be attainable maximum level. Maximum and ideal means the same thing. Minimum would create demotivation because it will be very easy. Maximum creates demotivation because it is very difficult. So uh, standard or target should be um, uh, challenging enough to motivate but not very challenging to demotivate. So they should be attainable. C would be correct. A company manufactures carbonated drink which is sold in one liter bottle during the bottling process. There is 20% 20, 20 loss of liquid uh, input due to spillage in our operation. What is the standard use of liquid per kg to two decimal places? Okay. So one liter is output. That means it is 80% of input so 125 would be usage if you take 125 multiply by 20% uh, loss becomes 0.25 loss if we take 1.25 minus 0.25 it will give you one liter so take one liter which is output that is needed divided by 0.80 it is like with discount so 1.25 is usage which of the following best describes management by exception? Management by exception is when uh, managers' uh, time is focused on things that are important. For example, if we talk about variances, when variance report is prepared, management doesn't look at all variances. Management would look at variances that are material or uh, variances that are uh, in control. So there are many factors uh, which uh, contributes to manager's focus. So manager doesn't look at everything. Manager looks at important things. This is what management by exception means. Using management reports to highlight exceptionally good performance so favorable results can be built up to improve future performance. Sending management reports only to the managers who are able to act on the information Focusing management reports on areas which require attention and ignoring, ignoring those which appear to be performing in acceptable limits. This is also one of the things in management by exception. If things are going okay, it doesn't need to be reported. Uh, if things are out of order, then it needs to be reported. Now, it doesn't mean always we are talking about variances. Focusing management reports on areas which are performing just outside acceptable limits.
Just outside limit would be okay. If they are more than outside, then it would not be okay. Remember, this is a subjective topic. Sometimes very little amount is material. Sometimes huge amount cannot be material. Standard cost improvise, which was the following. Target and measure of performance, information for budgeting, simplification of inventory control system, actual future cost. Remember, standard is not actual. Targets and measure, yes, st standard is a yardstick with which performance is compared. When we are doing variance analysis, we use standard information for budget. When we prepare budget, we use standard. Standard and budget usually mean the same thing. Simplification of inventory control systems. Uh, remember, in inventory, we use standard cost mostly, not actual cost. So it will be easier to control inventory. So all of the first three, not the fourth one. So A would be correct. A unit of product L requires nine active hours for completion. The performance standard for product L allows for 10% of total uh, time to be idle due to machine downtime. The standard usage rate, uh, the standard wage rate is nine per hour. What is the standard labor cost per unit of product L? Okay, so nine active hours are needed and there is 10% waste. So that means nine active would be a result of 10 total hours. So 10 total hours multiply by nine, we have standard cost per unit of 90. So this completes standard costing and variances.